Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing some thrift flips using Fusions Milk Paint for the first time. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I'm so excited to share with you guys that I am now a Fusion Milk Paint stockist. I've wanted to use this paint for so long. Today, we're going to give it a try. Our first project is this lovely frame that I thrifted. It has great potential and I think that the milk paint's only going to make it better. After cleaning, I'm removing the little label from up the top and then I'm going to be taking out the backing and the glass. Today I'm using Fusion's Toasted Coconut Milk Paint. This is a lovely cream color. So I'm opening up my packet and then I'm using a scoop to measure out my milk paint. When you're doing milk paint, you need to have one part milk paint mixture and one part water. Now I am going to add just a little bit less water just because I want it to be a little bit thicker and I can always add more water, but it's a bit harder for me to take it away. I end up wasting a bit of product. And you then need to stir it really well. You can use a little whisk for this. I'm then going to be using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear to create a little bit of resist. I want to be able to sand back the milk paint in these areas and by adding this wax, it's going to make it a bit easier at the end. My milk paint's been sitting for a few minutes, so now I'm coming in with just a natural bristle chip brush here and I am putting down my first coat. Remember, the first coat does not need to be perfect. We're just getting that on so that we have a good base to build upon. So I'm going to apply the toasted coconut milk paint to the entire frame. Once my first coat is dry, I'm going to come in with my second coat here. I'm just giving my paint a little bit of a stir and I'm laying it on pretty thick. If you want your milk paint to be really smooth, I definitely recommend using perhaps an immersion blender. I don't mind because I'm going for thick and chunky and rustic. So we're just laying a thick coat on and now here comes the fun part. I really want this to have a chippy old world look. So I'm grabbing my hairdryer and I am going to speed up the drying process here. And in doing this, I'm going to create all that wonderful crackle, that wonderful chippiness that I'm after. So I'm speeding it up. I'm still keeping my hair dry and moving, but then you can see I do focus on certain sections a little bit longer. And that wax that we put on before is also going to help when it comes time to do a bit of distressing. So again, if you want a chippy look on the second coat, you can see here, some of those chips are starting to appear up the top. I was so excited at this point. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Milk paint is really unpredictable. And if you want there to be just elements of cracking and you wanna make sure that the rest of your paint stays on, you just wanna make sure that you do still have a good surface for your paint to adhere to. And you can just add a bit of extra wax to help with the crackle and distressing. And here's a close up of what we have achieved so far. Look at all that beautiful crackle. There's some paint that's ready to chip and flake off. I am so excited about this milk paint. Next, I'm going to come in just with my finger and you can see I'm just starting to disturb the crackling, the areas where I could see that the paint was ready to flake off and I'm just gently removing the bits that are loose. I'm just going in gentle at first just to see where we're able to remove that paint and then I'm going to be coming in with some 220 grit sandpaper to get some more of that crackle off and also to wipe back the areas where I know that wax is sitting underneath and it's going to allow us to rub it back and get that really wonderful distressed look. Definitely do this in an area where you can vacuum or sweep up those paint chips because they do tend to accumulate quite quickly. Next, I'm going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Clear Best Dang Wax to seal my piece. This is going to minimize any future chipping off of the paint. I did hear it suggested that this was probably a better option than using a liquid top coat because that could reactivate and pull more of the paint off. Once I have my entire frame covered, I'm going to buff off the excess with a paper towel. Now we're going to create some artwork for the frame and I'm using IOD's Ephemeral Melange Transfer. 
I've selected the three designs that will fit nicely in the frame and here I'm just seeing that I am going to have to put some paper behind it. So I've just got some art paper here and I'm going to use the frame as a guide for how much paper I should cut out. I'm just using a pen to lightly go over the area that I need to cut and then I will use that same piece as a bit of a template for the additional two that I need to cut out. Once I'm sure that my paper is going to be the right size, I am going to use the backing of the frame so that I have a hard surface to go underneath my paper. I've pulled the backing off my transfer and now I am burnishing the transfer down with my transfer stick. You can see I'm lifting the plastic as I go and it's really easy for these to stick to paper. It did not take much effort at all. And I will repeat the same steps for each of our transfers. Once I have the little artworks ready, I'm going to position them on the backing and I'm going to clean up that glass a little bit first before I put it over the top of the transfers. And then we're going to just double check to make sure that they are going to sit nicely in the frame. I do have to trim a little bit of each of them though, just to make sure that they fit nicely. And here's our finished chippy paint frame. I just love how this turned out. I had so much fun using this new paint and was just amazed at how easy it was to achieve a chippy old world look. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. My next project is this little vintage wooden box. Now this is actually one of my boxes that I use for storage. I still have plenty of that milk paint left. We're going to use it on the outside of this box. So I've given that toasted coconut mix a good stir and I am going to now go in and use some of that Dixie Belle Clear Bestang wax in certain areas. This is quite a porous piece. So I do need to create some resist so that I will be able to achieve some crackle so that I will be able to distress it back a little bit better because milk paint does not have to be chippy so please don't think that you have to get a chippy look when you're using milk paint you can get a flawless beautiful flat finish with it I just like the chippy look that's why I force the heating and I force that chippy look on the second coat but if it's not for you you just wouldn't force the drying process and you certainly would not come in with that wax so I'm coming in with my first coat here and you can see I'm not being super careful to get full coverage and I am just going to be doing the outside and the top lip of the box. I'm going to leave the inside that natural wood tone. I was actually just really blown away by not just how far this paint is going, but how highly pigmented this paint actually is. After my first coat is dry, I'm coming in with my second coat now and I'm applying it just like I did the first, not being careful to get full coverage. And once I have each of my sides painted, I'm coming in with that hairdryer again to force that drying process. Now, because this is a raw wood piece, we are not going to get the same crackle effect because in order for it to get that crackle, it needs to have some sort of a resist. And while we did add that wax, it's just not going to be the same effect as a stained sealed piece of wood. So we are still going to get a vintage look here, but not to the same extreme. Oh, and I apologize for the dirty appearance of the inside of this box. I just grabbed it. I was on a roll. I wanted to use that milk paint and I just thought, well, I'm not painting the inside, so I'll just give the outside a wipe down. So just ignore that. So my paint is dry now and have a look at the little bit of crackle we were able to achieve. We still managed to get some. It's not as obvious, it's not as flaky, but it is still there and this looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm coming in with that 220 grit sandpaper again and because we put that wax down I am able to come in now and with very little effort I'm able to pull back that paint from the edges and anywhere that the wax was sitting. So hopefully this project actually shows you how well milk paint can stick. I had to put that wax down so that we could distress. So it really can give you a beautiful, more sophisticated finished look. You don't have to get that chippy look. Again, I'm just hitting the edges here with that sandpaper. If this look isn't for you, you just leave this step out. Now I'm going to be using IOD's Antiquities Stamp. I'm specifically using the Sweet Little Pig design and I am inking up my stamp with IOD's Black Permanent Ink and then I'm going to carefully turn my box over and position it in the center and then press it down. Remember, you always want one hand holding your stamp in place while the other one moves and applies pressure and then once you're happy with the design, you wanna lift your stamp straight up. Once my ink is dry, I'm going to seal the entire outside of the box with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax In Clear. When using Dixie Belle wax, you really don't wanna give it any longer than about 10 to 15 minutes before you come in and buff back the excess. And here's our finished vintage box. This turned out super sweet and I was actually even amazed at how different the IOD ink looks on milk paint. It makes the design look a lot more primitive and worn and beautiful. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. Our last project today is this rolling pin that I thrifted. I still had a little bit of that milk paint left. We're going to paint the entire thing with that toasted coconut mix. And I, again, am putting this over the top of a unfinished wood piece. This is an older piece, so any of the finish that was on this would have been gone quite some time ago. So it's going to stick really well here. We won't get as much crackle as the first piece, but it will give it a lovely primitive look. Once my first coat is dry, I'm coming in with that second coat, laying it on quite heavy. And then I did add just a tiny bit more water just to make it go just that little bit further. And then once I have the entire thing painted, again, I'm going to come in with the hairdryer so we can get some crackle. This is not going to give us the super flaky crackle like at the first project, but it is still going to give us some wonderful texture and it's just going to really add to that worn look that we're after in here. And you can see in this close up, we have managed to achieve some crackling. Might be a little bit tricky to see on camera. Hopefully it's, it's translating and you can see it. So quite a subtle look here but still beautiful and effective. So now I'm coming in with some 220 grit sandpaper and anywhere that some of that crackle was a bit more obvious, I'm getting a wonderful chippy look now that I'm coming in with the sandpaper and removing it. Here I felt like I took a little bit too much off the center, so I am going to add just a little bit more paint because we are going to actually be doing some stamping in the center and I want a somewhat solid background for that. So just adding another layer there and then again, speeding up that process. Now I'm going to be using one of the stamps from the Crockery Stamp Collection, and I'm particularly using the Devon Sheer Cream one. I thought that that would go beautifully on this. So I'm going to ink it up with IOD's Permanent Black Ink. I have taken it off the backing because I want to be able to manipulate it around the rolling pin. I wasn't game to have the stamp sitting on the flat surface and to roll my rolling pin over it this time. I thought I would just do this by hand. So I'm positioning it in the center and when I'm happy I'm pressing down bending it and again you can see I always have one hand holding that stamp in place while the other hand applies pressure Once the ink is dry, I'm going to lightly distress the stamp as well so that it ties in with that worn look. And then I'm going to seal the entire rolling pin with the Best Dang Waxing Clear and I will buff off the excess. And here's our finished rolling pin. This turned out so well. I 
love the really subtle chippy look that we've achieved here and I hope you guys don't get sick of me saying that because I am a bit obsessed with these paints. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that these projects have inspired you to give Fusion Milk Paint a try. Let me know which of these projects was your favorite in the comments. If you did like today's video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.